Hi, it's Jay Stephanie with Levinson and Stephanie here in Chicago. Today we're going to go through the case summary section as we have it set up in FileVine. This is just a real quick, streamlined, simple, sort of a, a three-part section as it should be because it's just a case summary. First part, projections. So this is something that I had set up uh, a, a while back and it lets us have some kind of an idea in terms of what we have coming down the pipeline in terms of cases, when they might be coming up to be resolved and you know potential value and potential net fee coming to us, sort of a way to project out some revenue. They're all obviously very you know rough estimates, both in terms of time and in terms of dollar amounts. This gives us something where before we had nothing. So what we try and do is we'll sit down uh, usually around once a month. And what we'll do is we look at cases that have been opened for you know, maybe three to four months. We sort of figure by that time, you tend to have a decent idea of what type of case it is. Again, these are projections, so it doesn't need to be exact. But in terms of how long it might take, you know, is this a clear policy limit case that we might turn around quickly? Or is it something we're going to be in for a longer haul. For the projected resolution date, really, we're, we sort of do it in six month increments. You know, is this going to, you know, maybe be done? We should be thinking about it being done in six, 12, 18, 24, more, something like that. You know, so we'll just put in, you know, say this is a two year one resolution amount. Again, if we're looking at the case three to four months in, you know, by that time, we probably know what the policy limits are. We probably have a decent idea of, you know, is this a surgical case or not? You know, has some idea of potential value, not exact, but some kind of an idea. Let's be a little optimistic with this one. And then to make the math easy, you know, I'm going to say there's no referring or co-counsel fee, but either way, we're always going to look at the net fee. And that's just something you know, again, to give us an idea for revenue purposes. And what we do is we can run the projections, run the reports, you know, so my partner Ken and I can take a look and get that. At the end of the case, we also want to put down information in here, you know, when a case resolves. So let's say I make up something here. And let's say if we did a little better than we had thought, put that in there. And you see, we have the calculated fields that I'll figure the difference between here and there. You know, in a situation, let's say, you know, damages ended up not being what we thought, good for the client, bad for the case. Same thing, it comes up with a negative difference, obviously, between these. So I'm going to do something here where I'm just going to make it so that the math is easy to figure out and then our fee would end up being in there. So what we can do at the outset, we can run, you know, projection reports across all of our projects to get an idea. And at the end, later on, we can run reports that look at, you know, cases that have resolved and look at the differences between projections and end results. This sort of gives us an idea to get better at projecting cases, take a look and evaluate, you know, what is it that created you know, a big difference here. Um, just a way to sort of a post-mortem, if you will. Next section down, co-counsel info. This one, if we start it off as an unknown or a no, keeps it nice and tight. If there is one, pulls these out. Co-counsel information, you know, this is obviously a person field. It's a limited field, so it's limited just to contact types that are attorneys. Let's just put in either an individual attorney or a firm. This information will pull up into our vitals as our referring or co-counsel. So we can always see that. That's obviously something important for us. Down here, even though the contact card is going to have an email address associated with it, we still want to be able to know the actual email address that we're going to send these updates to. You know, every now and then, person it might be the same email address, but they may want it instead going to, you know, a 
a paralegal or an assistant or maybe a, a different associate at the firm. Whatever that is, we're going to put that email in here. Now, and then whatever the co-counsel fee might be as a percentage, we'll put that in here, obviously just to track it and we save. Then I have this email action button and we're a Mac office. So this runs through Apple mail for me. Uh, if you have it set up with outlook, I'm sure it does the exact same thing. It just does it in outlook, but it, it has it set up. It is to whatever email address you have here, copies the project subject line. We already have in here. And then we use smart fields when I set this up. So it pulls in the client's name, both in the subject line, again, in this intro sentence, as well as the incident date. And then, you know, here's a, whoever's doing this email will fill out the information, the update, you know, the status, you know, Hey, we're in the midst of discovery or, Hey, we just filed the lawsuit or whatever. They can fill that in there as a nice little close. Again, puts in our client's name. It just pulls from the field. It makes it really fast, easy, and efficient so that the person at your firm that's going to be responsible for this here, it's typically the paralegal. It makes it a really a much faster process. So they're not sitting there retyping a memo every time they need to do it. The last section we have here, key dates. First one, the one that always uh, keeps us up, up at night, statute of limitations, put in whatever that is, that statute of limitations field also pulls in to our vitals. So that's another one we have over here. And then obviously when in, we're done with it. And again, we run reports off of, you know, what cases statute of limitations, there's a date here and there's no date here. So we know what's coming up down the, you know, we need to get something filed suit or if we're getting it resolved when that's, whenever it's done, you know, you just check it off and it closes out. But we also have a complaint filed field. And the reason we have that in there, it just lets us sort of, take a look and get a sense of, you know, what cases we have and you know, we can run a report with cases uh, where the criteria is there's something in here or look and see, Hey, what cases were filed recently, whatever type of report you want, but just having this field gives you some options. That is how we use the case summary section uh, here at our firm. As always, I'm happy to chat, discuss, answer questions, things to change, improve. So feel free to reach out. Take care.